Thomas Tolliver, and you're listening to the ongoing series, Good Lives, Good Lives, a part of Deborah's Social Stimulus. Today, we visit with Ken and Mary Tompkins, a Lexington couple who traced their family tree from slavery and emancipation to segregation and now the inclusion of multiple races. From a segregated army, segregated neighborhood, and segregated schools, the Tompkins have traveled a road familiar to African Americans their age, but foreign to those much younger. The Tompkins recall with vivid clarity moving to their present neighborhood. We have more neighbors of other races now, but when we first came here, there were only blacks in this neighborhood, and a very few of them. There were not many people that lived in this neighborhood when we moved in. No, no. As a matter of fact, we moved in on the day that Martin Luther King was killed. Yeah. And I'll never forget it because we came up, because the painter was going to be here, and he was going to show us how much he was able to accomplish. And it was just, it was a, a bad day, not, not a very good day at all. Uh, you were excited about moving in, but I think that just sort of kind of took it away for a while. And I went in the Army, was segregated. You took about 16 weeks of basic training. I got to assign uh, 105 uh, in, uh, infantry artillery. And so this was a uh, all black outfit. And when I got through training, then they sent me to Korea on the ship. You know, you have to take a shower and everything. I uh, uh, got a boy under my arm, <laughs> and it, it busted. Uh, then when, when I got to the uh, King Drake, it was named in Japan. I went to the, the medical, and uh, they seen his boy, and they said, when, when did you get wounded? I said, wounded? None. And I said, I, I had some, that boy busted on the... Salt water and all that stuff. And so they finally sent me to Tokyo General <laughs> Hospital. I went to Tokyo General, and they sent me from Tokyo General, another little hospital in Sendai. So what, what, what I missed, all the guys that I come up with and trained with, most of all of them got transferred to the infantry, and most of them uh, got killed, Tick Pen and all them. I, I, I probably would have been in that bunch if I, I hadn't, uh, had the hadn't uh, had the ball. The ball would mean that Ken would be around to see the Army integrated. Truman, uh, he uh, uh, desegregated the Army. So from that, they had to find, you know, put a, a lot of soldiers in uh, with the uh, white companies. So they finally put me in with a headquarters and headquarters batteries. And I got in supply with them. And that's why I ended up. So I uh, served my time before I got discharged. So I, I, I went from uh, Korea back here to Kentucky. Segregation, then integration, was nothing new. As a school teacher, Mary Tompkins began her career at an all-black inner-city school called Constitution. Prior to integration, she and another Constitution teacher were sent to teach at Breckenridge Elementary, which was all white. She recalls the experience. As I moved from Constitution to Breckenridge, it was different. I recall the first day that I went into the classroom, they would present you with a list, and you had to read the names of the students that you were going to have the, for that year. And so I read off my names, and they asked the students to come down off. They were, they were seated on bleachers in the gym, and so they would ask the students to come and line up at the door. And as the children lined up at the door, their parents also lined up with the children. So here we go down. There are no black kids in this school, just the two black teachers that were sent from Constitution this was the first time that these children in, had encountered a black teacher. And so as the parents came, they just pretty much engulfed the whole room. They just stood around the walls. So you, you did the best you could, you know, hoping that what you were going to do was going to be the right thing. But each day was better. They were helpful. They were kind. They wanted to know that their children were doing well. 
And before, I guess before the year was out, I sort of felt very, very much at home at that school. Now, the other girl that was with me did not. She wanted to go back. But I had grown and made friends, and I wanted to be with those people. And I especially liked the kids. And every once in a while, I'll run into one of them. And it makes me feel good when I hear them say, my mom and dad were so proud of how well you helped us. Because I think many of them thought, this is a new thing for us as well. So, and I think as they came in and line, would line up around the walls of the classroom, I don't know what they expected that I would do, but they just wanted to feel secure that their children were going to be okay. It was a new thing. Here we are having to encounter a black teacher with our white kids. But I think as soon as they learned I was going to treat their kids just like I treat my own, they began to warm up and things went well. The Tompkins are the keepers of their family history, which ranges from tattered newspaper articles about Ken's great-great-grandmother, a slave in Boyle County, to those of his father, a master farrier who had white apprentices, and to present-day stories of interracial marriage. And we have uh, all seven uh, nieces and nephews, mm -hmm. uh, biracial. What's Mattel's uh, boy's name? Mark. Yeah, Mark. I have another nephew. He's been married to a white girl. Agus' uh, son, what's his mm -hmm. name? Carl. Yeah, Carl. And then I got another, uh, Greg. He's married to a white girl. I, uh, is, uh, what you say, multicultural. Yeah. <laughs> got one married to a <laughs> Korean. Yeah. Got another married to a Japanese. So we are, mm -hmm. uh, say, a family of a bilingual. With comic relief, Ken Tompkins recalls the heyday of Dewey Street, Lexington's entertainment mecca for blacks during segregation. I went to all them clubs on, on uh, Dewey. Dewey Street. Do as you please, Street, yeah. <laughs> and a time of great racial unrest for the city after a white police officer killed a black teenager in the mid-1990s. He remembers the horde of young people angry over the shooting descending on downtown where he worked in a parking garage. The officer killed this boy. I was, at the time, I was, I was working downtown in the uh, garage. And uh, I, and I never forget the incident. Uh, they had a riot. And uh, all the some of black kids and the young young kids coming there, and this lady that was in the uh, <laughs> ticket booth for the cars come in park. She come out run. I said, "Don't uh, don't run. Yeah. I, they ain't after you. They are uh, just protesting about this guy uh, uh, killing this boy." And that was uh, all a big thing, for, you know, for City Hall. Ken Tompkins is proud of the progress his family and African Americans in general have made since the days of segregation, like seeing a black man elected president. That was a great experience, you know, for me, uh, uh, because I thought I, I would never see a black president. And uh, he has come a, a long, long ways to where he's uh, at now. And he, he's getting a, a lot of flack now. I don't think it's just because he's uh, back the way t times is. It uh, would be hard for anybody to be president. Him, uh, or what's the guy named Romney. At age 84, Ken only recently retired from his job as a custodian at a local school. Working, he figures, equates to longevity. Being active keeps you around a little longer. <laughs> Sitting down, make you sit down forever. <laughs> and like I say, I like being, you know, active now. I, I go up and down the steps and uh, so forth. And the more you uh, go up and down, the uh, more, more, more you can go up and down. Thanks for listening. I'm Thomas Tolliver. For more information, visit Good Lives, Good Lives on our website at deborahssocialstimulus.com.